Hi everybody, I hope that you're all doing well. So today I am here to do a video that, to be honest with you, I wasn't really sure I was going to be doing much of on this channel, and that is a book haul. Not because I don't tend to buy books, of course, I, <laughs> I wouldn't have this behind me if I didn't buy a lot of books, but I don't tend to buy a lot of books in one go. I prefer to have quite a small TBR, and so I tend to buy books as and when I read them. Now, I knew that there were going to be some exceptions to that rule. I knew probably Christmas or birthdays or next time I'm able to go to a York charity shop, I'm very, very likely to buy a lot of books at once. And what I would say is that if you are interested in seeing my slow accumulation of books over time, then definitely check out my Instagram account because I do tend to show my new purchases off there much more than I would do on here. However, a momentous occasion happened. If you've been watching my channel for a little bit, then you'll know that I had about five or six unread books that I'd had from pre-lockdown, which I'd still not gotten round to yet, and I'd really been putting off. And over the course of July, I've been really trying to make it my mission to work that TBR down and to try and get rid of those books. And I've almost completely managed to do that with varying levels of success, but more on that will be coming in my July wrap up. At the moment, currently left on that unread pile is A Fine Balance by Rohinshin Mystery, which I am currently reading, and also War and Peace by Lev Tolstoy, which I'm, I'll be honest with you, this is probably going to be a slower read project. I'm not going to be kicking myself if I don't read this like in the next week. I think this is going to be one that I slowly read over time instead of all in one go. And because I did make the last minute decision to participate in T Books and Tam Smin's uh, read along, which is the finish up on this week, I will be making quite a big dent, I hope, in a fine balance if I don't completely finish it. So I felt comfortable like slowly accumulating a few more books and it's, it's turned into a little bit of a pile. You know, what better way to celebrate finishing all of your unread books by accumulating some more unread books for you to put pressure on yourself to read. <laughs> First up, I might as well show you the book that I actually have made a bit of a dent in already. In fact, uh, I'm pretty much almost done with this. Uh, it is Middlemarch by George Eliot. Let me tell you what an odyssey it was trying to get this book to me. <laughs> so I decided to participate in Claire Fenby's Middlemarch Along right at the beginning of this month. And you know, I placed my order. I knew it was going to be late getting here for Middlemarch Along, but I thought it's fine. I can just use Project Gutenberg and I can listen to audiobooks until my copy arrives. However, like 30 minutes after placing that order, I get a message from the company to be like, oh, Unfortunately, we don't actually seem to have a copy of Middlemarch on our anywhere. It, I know it's on our records, but we don't actually have a copy of that book. So sorry, we'll refund you. And I was like, okay, that's fine. I then ordered it a further two times and each time it just somehow seemed to be getting lost in the post and the original seller didn't have a, another copy to send out to me. So I was like, I don't think I'm ever gonna get this book. However, Friday, it finally came, so. I finally have a copy of Middlemarch, even though I am like 90% of the way through it already. Hooray! The next book that I picked up was The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I have been seeing this get so many glowing reviews on booktube, so I was so, so excited to pick this up and finally make my own thoughts on this. Twins, inseparable as children, ultimately choose to live in two very different worlds, one black and one white. The Vineyard sisters will always be identical, but after growing up together in a small southern black community and running away at age 16, it's not just the shape of their daily lives that is different as adults, it's everything, including their racial identities. Many years later, one sister lives with her black daughter in the same southern town she once tried to escape. Across the country, the other secretly passes for white, and her white husband knows nothing of her past. Still, although separated by so many miles and just as many lies, the fates of the twins remain intertwined. What will happen when their own daughter's storylines intersect? Weaving together multiple strands and generations from the deep south to California from the 1950s to the 1990s, The Vanishing Half is at once a riveting emotional family story and a brilliant exploration of race, gender and identity, and the lasting influence of the past as it shapes a person's desires and expectations. This just seems like it's going to be absolutely fantastic and mind-blowing and very, very poignant and touching. So I'm very, very excited to get to this. Next up is a history book and might be on the more niche side of historical interest, uh, but it is The Social Life of Books, Reading Together in the 18th Century Home by Abigail Williams. This is a book that I talked about uh, really, really wanting to read in my book lover books video. I saw this last year, I think, in York Waterstones and I was just like, this is a book for me, but for some reason I just have put off buying it. 
As I think I've mentioned before, during my undergraduate history degree, I was really into the history of print culture and the history of literacy. Just the evolution of reading and print culture, all of that was so, so interesting to me, but it's something that I haven't really explored for quite a few years, so I really wanted to get back into it. And from what I understand, this really chronicles uh, the change in reading habits in the 18th century. As it reads, Abigail Williams provides a fresh and fascinating history on the evolution of reading into a popular social activity and essential component of domestic life in the mid 18th century. So once again, I'm really, really excited to get to this. I don't know how much crossover there's going to be with other people's interests on booktube, but hey, it's one for me. <laughs> Last week, my mum did a bit of a dash to Tesco and she rang me saying that she was in the book section and did I want anything? So I did a WhatsApp video and she showed me the aisles and I was like, I want that and that and that. And she was very, very lovely and she did pick them up for me. So I have these three books here to show you from that little spree in Tesco. I think it was in my uh, musical theatre book tag video that I talked about my hype holiday TBR. Basically throughout the year I keep a little list of books that have had a lot of hype and then when we get closer to uh, the time that I go on holiday with my family um, what I tend to do is if there are any books on there that I haven't picked up for whatever reason I really use my couple of weeks abroad as my opportunity to do that reading. Hype isn't something that I want to dictate all of my reading but but you know, it's nice to know what other people are interested in and to be in on that conversation. So when I go on holiday abroad, that's really my time to do that. And obviously because of COVID and because of lockdown, we were not able to go on our holiday in May, which was very, very sad. But like I say, when my mum went to Tesco, uh, there were three books that were on my little hype holiday TBR. And I thought, you know what? Just get them now. And they are Where the Crawl Dads Sing by Delia Owens. Three Women by Lisa Tadeo and City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. Now these are all books that I may not have initially picked up on my own but because I've been seeing so much buzz about them I've been really keen to just see what all the hype is about. Because these three books are all things that are a little bit outside of my normal like comfort zone for reading um, but I always like having that little push to read something different and hopefully one of these will be a winner. I think Where the Crawdad Sings is probably the book that I've heard the most praise about and especially recently I've been hearing a lot of people uh, saying how great this is. For years, rumours of the Marsh Girl have haunted Barclay Cove, a quiet town on the North Carolina coast. So in late 1969, when handsome Chase Andrews is found dead, the locals immediately suspect Kaya Clark, the so-called Marsh Girl. But Kaya is not what they say. Sensitive and intelligent, she has survived for years alone in the marsh that she calls home, finding friends in the gulls and lessons in the sand. Then the time comes when she yearns to be loved. When two young men from town become intrigued by her wild beauty, Kaya opens herself to a new life until the unthinkable happens. We then have three women by Lisa Tadeo. Uh, there is no blurb on this, so I cannot definitively give you a synopsis for this. From what I understand, I think it's Lisa Tadeo's um, like recounting uh, the lives of three different women, and I think something to do with their sex lives and how that affects their lives. I don't know, uh, but one of my friends uh, has recently read this and said it was absolutely fantastic, so I knew I did have to pick it up to see what all the fuss was about. And then we have City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. Um, Elizabeth Gilbert, I think, is probably most well known for Eat, Pray, Love and also Big Magic, which is the book that I have read by her, uh, but this is a fiction book and I've never read any of her fiction, but I hear that she is a very, very good fiction writer. New York, 1940. Young, glamorous and inseparable, Vivian and Celia are chasing trouble from one end of the city to the other. But there is risk in all this play. That's what makes it so fun and so dangerous. Sometimes the world may feel like it's ending, but for Vivian and Celia, life is just beginning. City of Girls is about daring to break conventions and to follow your desires. A celebration of glamour, resilience, growing up and the joys of female friendship and about the freedom that comes from finding a place you truly belong. An interesting trend to see. I seem to be picking up a lot of like 20th century based historical fiction and I'm hoping I enjoy it all. Next up is a book that I have seen so much buzz about but particularly from Jennifer from Jennifer Brooks and it is Romantic Outlaws The Extraordinary Lives of Mary Wollstonecraft and Mary Shelley by Charlotte Gordon. Mary Wollstonecraft is probably most well known as an early feminist writer, particularly her writing uh, The Vindication of the Rights of Women. She was also the mother of Mary Shelley who wrote Frankenstein, however they never really technically met since Mary Wollstonecraft died a few days after giving birth to her. And from what I understand this is a dual biography where one chapter will follow Mary Wollstonecraft's life, the next chapter will follow Mary Shelley's life. I was particularly interested in this because I've been getting slightly more into this time period of history and I absolutely love Frankenstein and the story of how Mary Shelley came to write Frankenstein. So I am so, so excited to read this and learn more about these two extraordinary women's lives. 
Next up I have a bit of a classic to show you. It is The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo in this stunning edition. I cannot for the life of me remember whose channel it was that I saw this on, but basically I saw this edition and I was like, oh, I must have this. I don't know if you can see, but in the indented writing there's lots of different quotes and then Esmeralda and Quasimodo and oh, it's so pretty. And then when you open it up, the end papers are of the city of Paris. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful edition of Hunchback of Notre Dame. As you might know, I'm a very, very big fan of Les Mis. I have <laughs> two editions of Les Mis right there. Um, so I did really, really want to get round to reading Hunchback of Notre Dame. I know the story of it, mainly from the Disney film, which I know is uh, a bit of a departure from the actual story. <laughs> I mean, to put it mildly, I know that this ends much more gruesome and grisly than, uh, than the Disney version. I'd actually tried to listen to this on audiobook uh, back at the beginning of the year and couldn't quite get into it, but I think that may be more to do with the translation and the audiobook itself than to do with the actual um the actual book itself. In fact I often hear from a lot of people that they prefer Hunchback of Notre Dame to Les Mis, that they find it a much more like cohesive story, a much better written novel. Which considering I already love Les Mis and think it's one of my favourite books of all time, I'm really really hoping that I too um love this just as much as everybody else seems to. Now getting into the last two books of my pile, we have Longbourn by Joe Baker. This is the story of Pride and Prejudice but told by the servants who wait on the Bennett family. As you'll probably know, um, I was a massive fan of the other Bennett sister which was Pride and Prejudice told from the perspective of Mary Bennett. I think perhaps uh, Pride and Prejudice retellings are something that I need to dig more into. I've heard that this sheds a lot of life and gives a very real kind of grisly account of what it was like to be a servant living in the early 19th century. So I'm really, really excited to dig into this story and see this perspective. If Elizabeth Bennet had the washing of her own petticoat, Sarah thought, she would be more careful not to tramp through muddy fields. It is wash day for the housemaids at Longbourn House, and Sarah's hands are chapped and raw. Domestic life below stairs, ruled with a tender heart and an iron will by Mrs Hill, the housekeeper, is about to be disturbed by the arrival of a new footman, bearing secrets and the scent of the sea. Last but not least, the last book on this pile is Axiom's End by Lindsay Ellis. This was a book that I mentioned in my July to December book releases that I'm very excited about, and it's finally here! For those of you who don't know, uh, Lindsay Ellis is probably best known for her video essays, particularly on uh, film and TV. She talks a lot about Disney, about Transformers, Phantom the Opera, amongst other things. And I've been following her reviews since I think 2010, so I've been a long time fan and I was so excited to see that she had a book out. I was really highly anticipating it, even though, to be honest with you, uh, this is sci-fi, it's not my normal genre, but I'm so excited to dig into this and see what I think. Truth is a human right. 2007. A leak revealing that the US government might have engaged in first contact has sent the country into turmoil, and it is all Cora Sabina can do to avoid the mess. The whistleblower is her estranged father, and his celebrity has caught the attention of the internet, the paparazzi, and the government, and redirected it to her. Cora wants nothing to do with the matter until she learns just how deeply entrenched her family is in the cover-up and that an extraterrestrial presence has been on Earth for decades. To save her own life, she offers her services as an interpreter to the monster. But in becoming an interpreter, she begins to realise that she has become the voice for a being she can never truly know or understand and starts to question who she's speaking for and what future she's setting up for all of humanity. Like I said in the anticipated releases video, this just screams Lindsay Ellis all over, so I am so, so excited to finally get around to reading this. So I'm finally going to do the thing that I always see YouTubers doing, which is making the risky decision to pile up all of the books so that you can see uh, the fruits of my labour and my wallet. So yeah, this is uh, quite a bit of a pile to be uh, going on with, um, hopefully. I can get to all of these very, very soon and you'll be seeing them in upcoming wrap-ups. And uh, maybe one or two individual book reviews, hopefully. Oh! Anyway, I hope that you are all having a fantastic day. Uh, do let me know if you are interested in any of these books or if you've read them, let me know your thoughts on them. Let me know particularly about any books that you've picked up recently or that you're particularly excited for. I'd love to hear from you. I hope that you are having a fantastic, fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks, bye.